in the Bahamas. This is Sam Bankman Fried. You see him there exiting the courthouse. He has been uh, ordered to report back to prison where he will be held until February 8th. So Sam Bankman Fried denied bail, and here he is uh, exiting that courthouse. Apparently, you know, in response to the decision, he hugged his parents, he shrugged his shoulders. He was before he was arrested, would it have been helpful for him to come before Congress and testify for hours on end and answer every question that we could come up with? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So it would have been really helpful? Yeah, oh, yes. Okay, okay. So um, why... 36 hours before he was scheduled to testify before this committee for hours on end, did the Southern District of New York send a provisional arrest warrant to the Bohemian government to facilitate his arrest, to preclude his testimony, which would have been incredibly helpful in the prosecution of Sam Bankman-Fried? I mean, I, I, I obviously can't speak for the, for the agency. It's kind of bizarre. I mean... I was a prosecutor for a number of years. I prosecuted complex white-collar cases. The thought of getting six hours of congressional grilling for a target of investigation or a defendant, um, that would be great for my case. Um, so I just don't understand. I guess the, the grand jury returned uh, the indictment on the 9th. Technically, you can delay weeks if you want to. So this was a decision made by somebody at DOJ to prevent Sam Bankman-Fried from coming here in a couple hours and testifying before Congress, answering questions in front of the American people. Uh, I've read his alleged testimony that he was going to give. He's basically saying that he lacks the criminal intent. He lacks mens rea. He's saying that his attorneys pressured him into filing Chapter 11, that he immediately, after doing a docu-sign to sign away everything, said, I don't want to do that, told his attorneys, again, this is all what he says, um, told his attorneys that undo it, I do not want to do that. And it seems that he's been taking steps ever since that to try to wrangle control of, of his companies back. Is that fair to say? You, you know, I, 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 can only, I can only read what you read in the, in the, in the press. I haven't talked to Mr. Ray. Um, <clears throat> this, Mr. Ray. It's our understanding that some of the FTX entities were not included in bankruptcy, including Ledger X. Could you explain why those entities were not included and why, what might ultimately happen with them? Uh, Ledger X is a, is a perfect example of the entities that were kept out of bankruptcy. It's a regulated entity. Uh, it's fully solvent. The customer funds were segregated. Uh, we believe that there's been no harm there whatsoever. There's no reason to put it into bankruptcy. Uh, ultimately, uh, you know, we will look to uh, sell uh, Ledger X and uh, put it in the hands of a good steward. With respect to me, my team and I have taken an initial review of my calendar, and what we've observed is that um, my team and I met with Mr. Bankman-Fried and his team. Over the past 14 months, we met 10 times uh, in the CFTC office at their request, all in relation to this DCO, this clearinghouse application. The last 12 hours is certainly interesting. As a recovering attorney, it makes me wonder why a prosecutor wouldn't want to potentially add lying to Congress to accompany the list of charges against Mr. Bankman Free. It also makes me wonder why the SEC waited until today to file its own charges. Frankly, Chair Gensler has failed at his job, and worst of all, he has failed to protect investors, which is one of the key components of the SEC's tripartite mission. Similarly, while he has been asleep at the wheel, the Democratic majority has failed to have him to testify before this committee for over 14 months, which I believe is a disservice to investors. I hope, uh, like it or not, we're moving into a crypto assets, crypto world, um, and uh, we really do need to learn. Um, this whole thing has the feeling of a Hollywood blockbuster. That's why the cameras are here, right? We've got a 30-year-old gazillionaire who raised billions of dollars and living in some condo with a bunch of young people, exotic products, tokens, and crypto assets. Um, it feels to me, though, as I look through particularly the SDNY indictment unsealed this morning, that a lot of what we're seeing here is as old as the hills. It's wire fraud. It's misleading investors. It's commingling of funds. This is as old as the hills. Um, there is something that, that, that I really do want to ask you about, though, which is a little different here. 
all the good work you've done with other companies, you were dealing with, by and large, money in banks or in other financial institutions. Here we've got tokens, which evidently were things of, quote, value, valued in some way or another that were used as collateral, living in places called wallets, not in banks. Zillionaire, I get it, all sorts of attractive things. Some of the supposedly smartest money on the planet, venture capitalists who are paid tens of millions of dollars to invest money, and, and I, maybe I wouldn't care if it was just the money of the very wealthy, but they're investing pension money. You know, they're investing university endowments, uh, companies like Lightspeed, Sequoia, Greylock, the best of the best invested in this. And you told us, you made a statement that, they're, that this was the worst governance, the worst you had ever seen. Did you see any evidence of any appreciable due diligence on the part of these entities that gave Sam Brinkman freed uh, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars? Yeah, you know, I'm not aware of what, you know, the, you know these parties may have have done in terms of their due diligence. Uh, you know, it is surprising, obviously, in light of all the circumstances. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I don't know what they did internally to verify these uh, these investments. So, well, obviously, um, only they know that. For five years, I've been trying to ban American investments in crypto. I'm the only member of the House to get an F from the only crypto promoting organization that rates members of Congress. My fear is that we'll view Sam Bankman Freed as just one big snake in a crypto garden of Eden. The fact is, crypto is a garden of snakes. Now, from the outside, crypto just looks like a non fungible token, an electronic pet rock for the 21st century, something that might be good to invest in, even though it has no apparent value, because you might get somebody else to buy it from you for even more. But in reality, the hope of crypto is to be a currency, to compete with the US dollar, and to announce its advantage over the US dollar in that competition. It puts the advantage right in the name. Crypto, hidden currency. Well, what is there a big market for that? Is there a big advantage that crypto has over the US dollar if it actually became a currency, which it's not yet? Well, there are drug dealers, human traffickers, sanctions evaders who will find that to be a good feature. And as Sam Bankman Fried would tell you, there's a hell of a market for bankruptcy court evasion. But the big market is tax evasion. And I know there are some on the other side who cheer every time a billionaire uh, escapes taxes. Um, the other purpose, the other announced purpose of crypto is to compete with the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency, thereby enriching the corporate uh, billionaire bros and taking thousands of dollars of advantage away from every American family because uh, we benefit from being a reserve currency. Now, Sam Bankman Freed, uh, or should I say inmate 14372, um, had one purpose in all of his efforts here in Congress. He was a well known figure, uh, only one wearing shorts. His one purpose was to keep the SEC out of crypto, to provide a patina of regulation. They don't get the point of blockchain and cryptocurrency. It's like keeping track of how many times you chew gum, like who cares? Um, there's other ways that are, uh, I think, less fraudulent to, to make transactions. But anyway, that being said, um, how many times have we talked here about the potential for abuse, fraud, and in the crypto market? Quite a bit. We've had a lot of cheerleading from some people, especially on the other side of the aisle. I don't hear it today. I haven't heard it yet, but do want to hear it like we normally hear it, how wonderful it is and how they shouldn't be regulated by the SEC, that they're too tough on them. Imagine we're not going to hear that today, especially after what we saw with FTX. Everything you've said, but at the same time, I have to say that the product that they give is a, is a hybrid product, is it not? Well, it's certainly a, it's a currency. It's an alternative currency, yes. So then who should regulate it? I, I don't have an opinion on that. You don't, Mr. Congress. Okay. Well, that's the whole problem, I think. I, I don't get the point of um, cryptocurrency to begin with. Um, 
other than, you know, if you're a terrorist or someone that wants to hide money, and then I, I get the point. But other than that, I don't get the point myself. But if we are going to have it, um, we have to regulate it. Someone has to be in charge. We have to make sure that we don't continue to defraud the American people. And that's where the government comes in. Somebody's got to take charge of this. I think it's the SEC. I've always thought it was the SEC. They had a lot of pushback from my friends on the other side. I didn't hear them quite today pushing back as they normally do. I'd love to see that. Um, but again, someone has to regulate this if it's going to exist. Don't you agree? I, I certainly think there has to be you know, more controls in this sector. We should regulate it. I defer to this committee. Trace. Okay, and my remaining two minutes, I want to turn a little bit to operations. Uh, is there any evidence of his parents' involvement in the operations? We're any? investigating that, uh, as well as any other you know, players. In the Email, area. Slack, you know, it's Signal. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's billions of records. It's a okay. very vibrant environment. Um, so I hear that you haven't discovered that. I mean, it would, it would seem interesting that uh, that they didn't either give legal advice or business advice or parental advice, maybe. Well, well, certainly, clearly, you know, I think in our first day papers we indicated that uh, uh, that Mr. Bankman had given legal advice. Okay, had, had he been an employee of FTX? Has it been reported? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if, his, if he actually had an employee status. Uh, okay. but he certainly received payments from. Uh, the family did receive payments. Okay, it, that sounds like employment to me. You got a payment for, okay. Well, I, I, I raise that because on December 8 of 2021, uh, I met with Sam Bankman Freed in my office, which I will note was just immediately before he came down to the hearing. He was at least 15 minutes late, and his father accompanied him uh, in that meeting. Uh, I asked and focused on what types of regulation he was under, his engagement with regulators, and how that affected FTX. Um, but uh, it, it seems to me that um, there's a lot more to uncover here. Uh, certainly, Mr. Bankman-Fried uh, has, uh, has uh, let's say, wooed many in New York, Silicon Valley, around the world. And yes, certainly here in D.C., uh, he was, uh, it, they, they loved everything, everybody loved the exciting idea of a politically progressive, smart entrepreneur who was going to reimagine capitalism uh, and, uh, and change the, word, uh, the world, feeling better about themselves, all while making them gobs of money. And I'm glad to see it's finally unraveled. So my time is a potential theft. You have stated unauthorized access to certain assets occurred and that the company was in touch with law enforcement officials and regulators. Have you determined whether, in fact, assets were moved out after the bankruptcy? Yes, clearly there was assets moved out uh, after the bankruptcy. And do you know whether or not that was an actual hack, or was this done, as has been reported, at the direction of the Bahamian authorities? It was both. It was both. And so some was done... Uh, some, some was done as a result of a, of a hack. Some was done as a result of the request of the Bahamian authorities. Yes, that's right. And do you, do you have indications as to why the Bahamian authorities made that request? Well, it wasn't a request. They just took it. The, the Bahamian authorities took the funds that were at FTX yes. through their own action. Was no action required by they FTX were, employees? Were, Maybe you could provide just they, a little they were, they were aided by the ex-employees, yes. They were aided by former employees yes, of Mr. FTX. Yes, Mr. Wang and Mr. Milford. It, is, is, is it in the, the eyes of the Bahamian authorities did this to protect clients uh, and creditors? What was the what was the do you do you have insight into the motivation uh, behind this action? Unlike the Chapter Eleven process, there's no transparency in, in, the, in the process in the Bahamians, and we've repeatedly asked them for clarity about what they've been doing, and we've been shut down on that. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And we had the bank man hearing. And we can clearly see there are some powerful people centered around the bank man. And you know I brought you plenty of videos showing you what the bank man was up to. And it was all about Ledger X. Guys, these derivatives. This hundred trillion dollar market being ran by an algorithm. Everything else around it, guys, is all smoke and mirrors. Nothing but a distraction.
we know these big banks and big corporations, even BlackRock, are not going to invest in someone they haven't investigated. We know he's an MIT grad. We know his parents are professors at Stanford. And we listen to a lot of politicians playing the Hegelian dialectic. Crypto and blockchain is only good for illegal activity. And guys, we know the banks are the biggest what? That's right, I'm going to let you finish that. But guys, us and crypto, we already know the real use cases. They can't fool us there. Whether you're conscious or not, you automatically know that they're lying. We already see JP Morgan using blockchain and digital currencies. We can go into the funding rounds and see all these big banks and big corporations were funding crypto from the beginning. So when these politicians say that it's only good for illegal activity or they don't understand it, they're lying. And guys, crypto means hidden message, hidden meaning, like the old politician stated. But what he left out is that crypto is for the robots, algorithms, and drones for the fourth industrial revolution, which all these politicians are aware of, but they're not going to tell you. And politician Mr. Hahn said it best, this is just like a movie. And guys, we know this is all a movie. And we know how this movie ends. We've seen this movie before. The NWO wants to make you indecisive, the masses, so therefore they don't invest. And they won't study the industry. Because remember, blockchain gives the NWO the all seeing eye. And we know stable coins and CBDCs give them the ability to tell you what, where, and when and how to buy. You have three to six months to spend it or poof, is gone. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows. When it comes to the New World Order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leverage to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, 
the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim save the village. Part two, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim save New York. Long COVID-33. Part three, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.